Welcome to the Love and Lattes podcast, a coffee lover's guide to good vibes, books, rom-coms, and everything in between. Now grab some coffee and let's get chatting. We're here to talk about you and your acting career in One Call of the Heart. But um, <laughs> it was funny, I just talked with Loretta Walsh, I guess a week or so ago, and we talked about you know, oh, how yeah. she moved from Australia to Canada. So can you talk about, I assume you're Canadian based from what I've gathered, but can you talk about yes. making the move from the wonderful, beautiful UK to Canada? That's just, that's a pretty far move. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it definitely happened almost by mistake. It wasn't the original plan. I was doing a theatre show in the UK and then I moved to Australia with my partner at the time. And I was there for just the year. And then it was from there that I moved to Canada because I had met a talent scout who was talking me through the pros and cons of moving to LA or possibly moving to Canada and uh, I ended up attempting Canada and uh, staying so yeah it was a big move. Well I'd say you found some really good success being in Canada that's amazing. Yes yes I have I'm really I've been really really lucky actually. Oh, wow. That's so cool. I I love all things like England. Just it's just so beautiful over there. (laughs) It's so lush and green and then the accents. So do you ever get to go back home and visit? Yeah, I do. I mean, obviously, since the pandemic, I haven't really been back, um, but I'm hoping to go back soon and uh, spend a little time with the family because I do miss them. So, you know, it's been it's been tough, but, you know, FaceTime. FaceTime's there. So that's been really helpful. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's like, you're almost actually there. Like right now we're chatting. I mean, it's so, and we're so exactly. far away. It's so cool. <laughs> well, uh, before we move on from England, I was wondering like what part of England I've done this cool thing. I don't know if you do this, you can Google earth and you can like go through the streets, like in Surrey, I like was just driving along in this neighborhood and I could just like, <laughs> feel like I was there on Google earth. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny in Surrey. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And it was like a scenic area or something. And uh, you should do that. It's like the neatest thing. And it's just trees everywhere. You can kind of see the houses, but it's just trees and trees. (laughs) That's cool. Yeah. Cause my family live in Surrey. So (laughs) that's why I was like, sorry. (laughs) I don't know if it's just because the holiday that I looked it up because I think she said that's where she's from because Carrie Grant was from there or something. I'm sure you've seen the holiday with Kate Winslet, but yeah. So I was like, oh, sorry. I'll just look at that up and see what it's like. (laughs) So cool. So cool. Well, I'm so jealous of anybody from there. It's just such a cool thing. But, but now you're, you know, it's so crazy talking to you. I would never guess like you're you the way you portray Minnie she's so like strong and her like her voice is even down like an octave compared to what you sound like was it like um something you like worked on to like perfect her like the way she speaks because it's even like her her um manner and her like pace she has such like an interesting like unique way of speaking like to where she just like commands the presence of everybody and did you like work on that actually no it was just something that I just decided when I did the audition um it was the only way I could see Minnie as a character and although I didn't mean for her to speak quite so deliberately um it just ended up being that way and it just ended up sticking and uh yeah I've just gotten so used to to playing her that way that I think when I went back from season eight to season nine to go back to it I really had to sort of find her voice again because I was just like wow it's it's sort of really in a different place to how I would maybe do general American for any other role or audition so absolutely that's so interesting so you're like well if I did that in the audition I better do that in the real role yeah. now. <laughs> they liked it yeah <laughs> that's so cool it'd be so funny if just like she decided to break out just like a British accent all of a sudden everyone would be like Imagine. whoa what's going on out of nowhere Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh my gosh, Angela. Uh, but that's so funny. I was going to say, okay, I forgot this. Where where was Minnie last week? And Angela, they were like off doing something. I don't know if you can say, I'm sure we'll find out in a couple of days, but I was like, mystery, where did they go? <laughs> yeah, we were, we, we, we have been away um, and you will find out. I promise you will find out. 
Um, but yes, that's actually a nice piece of our little storyline that uh, takes us through to the end of the season. So yeah, uh, stay tuned for that. Oh my gosh, is it is next week or not next week? Two days from now. Is that episode 10? Are we already at episode 10? Isn't that crazy? That's it insane. Is. Because it does actually feel like the season premiere was literally last week or something. And it really just, does. It happens so fast. It happens so fast every single year. And I I first see, you know, the date that it's starting, and I'm thinking, oh yeah well, this will be going through till almost summer. And then you're just like, wait, it is almost summer. <laughs> so Yeah, like you're coming out of winter barely when it's starting. And then here we are, summertime. Wow, yeah, it's really flown by. Yeah. And it's been a great one. It's funny, I feel like last season kind of drug on just because I don't know if it was the love triangle thing. We Everyone was like wondering what would happen. But this season is just like flown by because there's been so much going on in Hope Valley. So I'm just like, has it been kind of, what like, has it been a fun, like reminiscing about like all the different things going on, especially with the Canfields for you this season? Yeah, I mean, it's been the best part for this season for me was just being able to develop the Canfield storyline in general, and not just with Mr. Landis and finishing that story. It was just being able to explore more as a family and then for Minnie and the cafe and all of those things. It was just great to be able to you know, like get our teeth into something really good this season and, and just spread our wings a bit more. Um, so that was that was the thing I think that was the, the most exciting and just seeing where we've come from season eight to where we are now in season nine and how it's all developed. That's been really great to see. Yeah, I, it feels like y'all have been there so much longer than just like a season. And now we're in obviously two seasons, but like you're saying they were newcomers last season. Now they're like established and like really kind of investing themselves in Hope Valley with the cafe. And it, that was like a big deal. That was so fun. Were you excited to see maybe like Minnie and Joseph kind of take on these like entrepreneurial, like business, like roles in the community? That was like a really cool thing I thought. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I was really happy when Joseph became the pastor. Um, and then the idea of Minnie buying into the cafe, I, I was really excited about that. But of course, you know, it's a uh, very, uh, it's staple in Hope Valley as Abigail's, you know. And um, of course, I was, I was wondering how the Harties would feel about that. And actually, they've been really, really good about me buying into the cafe, and uh, which I really, really appreciate because it was obviously uh, a little bit of a scary idea um, to take on such such a big idea for the show. And uh, I'm just really glad that they 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 have embraced it as they have embraced the family in general. So. Oh yeah. We all love the Canfields. They're so fun. And those kids and then Cooper just getting into stuff lately. And then Angel like just coming into her own. Yeah. Cooper's been, he was a mess this season early on. I think he's, I think he's um, straightening up a little bit more. It seemed like last, uh, last episode, but yeah, that was fun to see both you and Viv, like kind of get your parental side going and try to control this kid who's being goofy, but you know, we're all kids. We all have our moments. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So that was definitely something to see, you know, just, and, and even that for the kids, just seeing a whole different side of things for them as well. Because I mean, all of season eight was about, you know, Angela and whether she could go to school. And so I think it's really nice that Elias got to, to have his, his time to, to show his growing pains and, and how we were dealing with it as a family. Oh yeah. yeah. I just have to say you're like such a great actress. Cause I'm thinking of like, when you were like, I'm going to have dinner with Mr. Landis and make like, and I don't like him. I'm going to make him like, or I, I'm not I'm wording it right. You know, I'm not wording it right, but you know what I mean? I'm talking about that. You know, now like you're so bubbly and fun and you're just like, you're just so determined and you're just such a great actress. And it brings such like a nice, like weight to the show because you have Rosemary who's all over the place. So fun. <laughs> and then Elizabeth so sweet. And then here we have you, you were just like, you own it. You own everything. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, um, it is, you know, it's one of those things joining a show 
um, when everyone is so established and all the characters are so established and, you know, their characters have been loved since, you know, season one or two or three or four. And uh, then to come in so late and then to sort of have to find your own feet and then just, you know, hope that the, the hearties will, will accept you and embrace you. It's, uh, yeah, it was, it was a... Um, it was an experience, but it was a good experience. <laughs> so you're like was, the, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh, so you're like a new kid at school trying to like see how you'll like fit in with everything. Yeah. yeah, no, it is, it is, it really is. Because I mean, of course, on set, the cast and the crew were absolutely amazing. And of course, you're trying to, you know that they've been together for a really long time anyway. And uh you know, you, you go in, you don't want to be doing too much or doing too little. You just kind of want to try and try and find your niche in there with all the with all the characters and then the cast. Because some of them I already knew, like I knew Andrew Brooks. Uh, we, we're friends and we have the same manager. I also knew Johanna because I worked with her on my first job when I first came to Vancouver. So I knew her. Um, so then there, there were some people there that I already knew but then of course for me in the first season I worked a lot with Erin because of the storyline with Angela and in fact I never did really see Andrea or Johanna very much I didn't really have any scenes with them so but it was what I loved actually about being able to work with Erin is just being able to be in such close proximity with what she does and her involvement in the show in general and um it was it, it was really a sort of a nice welcome to sort of work so closely with her and have so many scenes with her and really kind of get to know her because it can be like that when you start a show your scenes might be with someone else completely different and you never see anybody really and uh so yeah it was actually really great uh, to have Erin there in the beginning with me oh yeah and then it's kind of like you built this lovely relationship those scenes last season were just so sweet and just wonderful like we hadn't seen anything really like that if we're like the whole series so I was so excited <laughs> to see that connection and so like yeah she's a producer on it and everything do you think you'll ever want to like go behind the scenes and maybe do something like that in the future yeah I I like the idea of of directing um, and I always when I'm on set I always try to sort of pay attention to other things as well that interest me um, because often like when I first started like happens to some act a lot of actors you know you start out you just want to be in front of the camera that's all you want to do and then gradually you start to find interest in other other sides of the industry um, that you would like to sort of dip your foot in so to speak and and try out at some point um but yeah I'd definitely like to try directing possibly producing it's all just you know it just just to see the process it would be very interesting to have the opportunity oh absolutely you should talk to somebody about that there's so many movies they make you know with Hallmark yeah. Channel and all these other made for tv movie networks you could probably find work I'm sure they would love to have you <laughs> <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, so we were talking about like, you know, working with Aaron, but like, did you feel a big difference coming into the second season? Did it feel more like you were like more comfortable? And it, it, it just seems like, you know, everyone just seemed, even just their characters were more like at home in Hope Valley. Did you feel that yourself as an actress coming back? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I really did. I, I just felt like, I was coming back to almost like a second home because the first season we had for Minnie, she had a good number of, of airtime and episodes to be part of. So once you've been in a certain number of episodes, you just get a bit more comfortable by the end of the season, as opposed to if you're in like maybe two or three, it, you know, it feels a bit different because you're coming and you're going, but sort of being there throughout the end of last season I was able to just feel really comfortable by the end so when season nine started coming back to set it did everything it really did feel like a second home like the same ADs and the same all the same crew it's just like oh hey you know 
it, it, I know it's been a few months, but it doesn't almost feel like that at the same time. So that's always, it, it's a really nice feeling to know that you can call that work. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't seem like work at all. It seems like fun and uh, like a reunion. (laughs) And so there's been lots of great moments. I cannot believe there's only three episodes left, but of the episodes we have seen, or maybe the ones we haven't, even though you can't tell too much, has there been like maybe an episode or maybe just like a scene you really enjoy filming from season nine? (laughs) Uh, Yes. And it comes in episode 12. There was a scene. There was a scene that we did, um, and I, in, I, I would say it's probably two. It ends up being two scenes, but it is technically part of one scene. But it was extremely fun to film, and I have. Um, I'll post this this behind the scenes video that I have um, when it airs because it was such a funny scene for us to film that the laughter in it was actually very real, um, and. It was definitely something that Minnie and Joseph have never done before. So it was actually a really nice story to have, like to to, to finish off the season for the two of them. Um, Because I guess the beginning half of this season has been quite taxing for them as a family with Cooper and then Mr. Landis. And um, now, you know, we've got the cafe, but um, Minnie's away at the moment. And, you know, so it's actually really nicely ties up um, season, uh, season nine for them in that scene. And I'm just really excited for everybody to see it. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. So everybody definitely look out for a special moment in episode 12. Very exciting. <laughs> well, I guess we'll find out in about, gosh, so after this Sunday, after two days from now, there are only two weeks left. Okay, so in two weeks, pretty much, we will find out about this cute thing. Two weeks, <laughs> nothing. That's, That's nothing. crazy. Well, uh, so we're, you know, it's, I guess filming starts back up, what, in July? So technically, if season 10, I don't know if anyone's heard anything about season 10 getting renewed. I know everyone would love that, but it would start filming very quickly in just a couple, maybe two and a half months or so. So if that does happen, what would you love to see happen with many in the Canfields? Oh, um, well, first, you know, it would be it would be nice if we could continue the Canfield storyline, because I feel like they still have so many more stories to tell in general as a family. But for Minnie, it would be really nice if there was an opportunity to, I guess, do more in the cafe and with the cafe and uh, because I guess she's only just pretty much bought it so recently and there's not really too much happening with her very specifically working in the cafe at the time. It's just mostly a lot of scenes with the family. It would be nice to to actually have more scenes as actually some of the other cast members, which uh, I've realized now I'm thinking about it as I'm talking, I tend not to have many scenes with any other cast members. A lot of them are with uh, Erin and Viv, of course, and the rest of the family. And the little scene I had with Bill there and um, Mr. Landis, but the rest of the cast I don't really see. So it would actually be really quite nice to have more scenes with them in the cafe and have some more interactions. It would be really quite fun you're right now that you think about it you're like I'm just trying to think I, I know last season I love that moment when um Paul Green Dr. Carson stuck his hands in the pudding and you had to see with him so that was really funny but you're right we've got to get you we're working with some of those other actors and mixing it up a little bit <laughs> yeah you know just doing something I guess a bit diff- very mini of course but you know just a bit different <laughs> yes absolutely and she wore the cutest like shirt it was like polka dot or something in this season I think I saw it maybe a couple times have you just like enjoyed like traveling back in time to the 19 teens and getting to wear these like (laughs) gorgeous fun clothes yeah I think I know the blouse you're talking about it's like pink like a baby pink with the or a light pink with the I think it's brown polka dots and it's got this cute Yes, neckline with a bow. I love that blouse. It's so cute. 
Um, but yes, this season when we did the when we did the wardrobe fitting, we added a few more pieces, of course, and uh, some of the blouses were really, really cute additions because obviously we want to keep the wardrobe in some way realistic. And um, Barbara and Greg and, and the whole costume design team, they're just so great with any alterations and, and getting new things to try. And um, it was nice to actually, we kept the skirts and we kept the length and everything like that. But we, we wanted to switch up the blouses just to make it a bit more interesting. And some of the combinations, even when we were just trying them on, we were just like, mm, is this blouse going to work with this skirt? And then you put it together and you're like, actually, really, it actually looks different to what we thought it would. So, yeah, we've had some really good fun trying to find a few new looks for Minnie because, of course, it's trying to keep her character um, her, her clothes have to be realistic to her personality type as well. You can't go too crazy, um, but they are good clothes for Minnie's character. So it's fun. Okay. I, I love hearing about the behind the scenes stuff with the costumes because they're so fun. Now, I wonder if Minnie would ever wear pants because I know uh, Faith has been wearing pants and so has Fiona's been wearing pants. Wouldn't that be fun? Minnie could wear pants. That would be really interesting. I wonder if Minnie... Hmm, is Minnie the type? Hmm, I don't That's know. Funny. I don't think so, yeah. but I would just love to see, like, she could walk in with pants and Justice's reaction would be like, what in the world are you wearing pants for? <laughs> like, I saw the rage. <laughs> 1919. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. But oh, I guess it's I just interesting because she's, she's such a stern character that in, in, in one way you might think, maybe pants would work on someone who, you know she's she's business-like and she gets things done but I think it's like her general demeanor is so feminine that I guess maybe not <laughs> that's true that's true and I just I she her outfits work for her every it's funny when you think about it Aaron's tops are so different than like Pascal's or Minnie's tops yes They're so different. And I didn't even think about that until we we're just chatting and how they're very specific to the characters. So yeah, I bet that's so fun for you when you're going into pre-production, getting to put on all these really cool clothes. Yes. Yeah. That's oh. definitely, that's definitely fun. Just the, just playing, just playing with the costumes is definitely, and the coats. Oh, I love, I love trying on the jackets and, and the coats for winter scenes and things like that, because uh, we all buy coats, but you know, because it's because it's costume, they tailor them and you're just like, oh, why don't I go and get my coats tailored? Because I can't be bothered. But if I did, <laughs> they'd fit like this. <laughs> Yeah, not like as the term is off the rack. That's what they say. But yeah, I don't get my clothes tailored. But gosh, yeah, that must be nice to have a tailored coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and um, I just remember something. So I talked with Viv and I, we were talking about the Hope Valley days. And I was like, what's your favorite holiday? So he said Christmas. What is your favorite holiday? My favorite holiday. Oh, you know, I'm going to have to say Christmas. Oh, Bonfire night. A I'm good British, bonfire night. We're going to go with bonfire night, you know, because we don't really, Halloween isn't as big in the UK, but, you know, Guy Fawkes and bonfire night and remember, remember the 5th of November is a very British thing. So <laughs> it must be because I don't know anything about that. <laughs> Guy Fawkes. Oh my goodness. Yes, that's a very. British history I believe he tried to build the Houses of Parliament <laughs> oh my goodness so, whole holiday thing that we do bonfire night you're supposed to have I mean this doesn't happen so much but you're supposed to have Guy Fawkes on the bonfire um and you know it's made out of straw like <laughs> it's just a thing um yeah fireworks and everything and you have a barbecue usually and yeah, it's just such a British holiday. So I'll just put that one in there. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. Very like how you specific to characters. That's very specific to you. So super cool. I'm gonna have to do some Googling on that. <laughs> That's fun. And then uh, let's rewind really quickly before we kind of start mm -hmm. wrapping up. Can you talk about, well, I'm trying to think which one we're going to start with first. 
Well, okay, let's start with this. We'll go chronological order. What inspired you to get into acting to begin with? Was it something like as a child you really wanted to pursue? Um, I, I would say yes, but it was also just something that I always was interested in. And I think by the time I got to maybe 15 and I was doing my A-levels, do they call them A-levels here? I don't think so. <laughs> The exams you do when you're 15. Yeah, um, those exams. <laughs> 15 or 16. No, it's 16. I think it's 16. The exams you do when you're 16. Um, I just decided I wanted to do performing arts. And I think I knew at that point it was something that I wanted to pursue as a career. Um, but I was also very much interested in beauty therapy, which was something um, that my mum actually suggested that I train in prior to doing my acting, just, just to have something as a sideline. And um, so I trained to do beauty therapy and cosmetology. And um, I'm actually really glad that I ended up doing that because it makes my life so much easier now because all the treatments that I would normally go to a salon for, I can do them all myself. So I, I love that I've been able to do that, but it was also, a good qualification that at any point I can get a job doing it anywhere and I actually really really enjoy beauty therapy anyway so it was always something that well you know if there's a slow period I would love to you know do what, what manicures and pedicures and massage and treatments in a salon and stuff because I really I really love doing it for sure. That's so cool. Yeah. Facials. You could just do it all on your own. That's so cool. Yeah. That's a great fallback. And you know, like it's amazing. If you look at like magazines, they credit and even like stylists, like uh, with the wall group, if you know who they are, they're a big styling fashion company out of LA. They have like manicurists who do like the manicures of celebrities for red carpets and magazines. So it's like a real career you can go into. It's not even like a fallback. It's so cool. Yeah, right. Yeah, because I, I do know actually I knew someone who she was a massage therapist, like a celebrity massage therapist, and she didn't start out that way. It was just something that she enjoyed doing and uh, she got in with the right people and then she was traveling a lot. But then she ended up going back to a salon because the traveling was just a lot. I mean, because it's fun, right, you know, but then it's a lot to always be away all the time with uh, an actor. So it is, like you said, it's, it's, it's a perfectly solid career to have anyway. Oh, wow. Well, that's so cool that you kind of like, you transitioned from like that interest to acting. And now we're going to go a little further into the future. Okay. Can you talk about your audition for the role of Minnie when that came about? Were you like familiar with how big When Calls the Heart was? I knew of When Calls the Heart, however, I was not as familiar with how popular the show was. Um, at the time I was in the UK and I'd been going back and forth from the UK and Hallmark Channel isn't big in the UK. We don't have it as a channel. So although I knew about the Hallmark movies and shows, I didn't really know them that well. Um, because I already knew Andrea at that point as well, I did know that she was on it. But again, I wasn't exactly sure how big it was exactly. Um, and then when I got the audition through, that was very interesting because I, I was reading the breakdown and I read that they were looking for a whole family. And I just thought, okay, recurring. Okay, this is interesting. Are they looking for a family for the rest of the season or are they looking for a family just to sort of do a few episodes? And I just thought, well, it's a whole family. They must want to have possibly a story for them. But then, of course, I never want to preempt anything or jump to conclusions. So I just thought, OK, well, it's still going to be good regardless of what they're there to do. And I'll just do the audition. And um, I did the audition from the UK and I had to ask my agent because the turnaround time was very short and also the quarantine time needed to be included in that as well at the time. And I asked my agent if he could let me know if I get shortlisted so I have some kind of radar of what's going on. And he let me know on 
the Monday that I was shortlisted and then I was counting days I was sort of thinking wait if I'm shortlisted now I need to be in Canada by Friday <laughs> today's Monday so Wednesday evening I get an email telling me that I've been booked and I was just thinking wow right <laughs> so I need to be in the country in 36 hours <laughs> okay cool no problem <laughs> so of course I had to just book a flight um just the, uh, the next available flight because of course because it was the middle of the pandemic and a lot of flights were not going anywhere the British Airways wasn't flying anywhere and I was like any any airline that's flying to Canada, I just need any airline that's flying to Canada, that will get me there on time. And so, yeah, it was literally such a fast turnaround and I came back and I had to do my quarantine and finish my quarantine. And then I went to meet Viv um, for the first time and we had a chat because we spoke on the phone. Um, yeah, and then it was wardrobe. And then a few days later, I was on set. What a whirlwind experience. That's crazy. So you said you, you found out on Monday that you got a uh, shortlist. And when did you send in your tape? Was it like just a couple of days before that? It was probably about a week before. Oh my gosh. And I, I mean, I knew this turnaround time was extremely short, but I, you know, when I asked him to let me know if I was shortlisted, I think by that point, I was looking at the days and I was thinking, oh, I haven't heard yet probably I haven't been shortlisted okay it's fine and then because I got the message in British time it was sort of 12 30 at night so so I got it very very late but during the day I was like oh it's probably gone I mean it's been a week it's like but you know yeah <laughs> crazy how fast some of these things go it's just like I don't think people who are kind of in the industry realize this like is nuts if you don't hear something within a few days you're like I guess they didn't pick me but then you never know that's just uh, so crazy well we'll finish up thank you for sharing that so cool uh, we'll finish up with a quick rapid fire question session okay okay what is the last show you binge watched Baker and the beauty oh I've heard is that is that good it was very good. <laughs> I, I really liked it. I quite liked it. Gosh, was that really the last show I binge watched? Yes, it was. <laughs> Gotta binge watch something else. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, there's so much <laughs> stuff out there. I'm sure you will not have a hard time finding something. <laughs> and then what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Um, butter pecan. Oh, that sounds good. Butter. I, I say pecan. I don't know if I say that. It's, no, you guys it's say fancy. pecan. Pecan. Yes. <laughs> pecan. yes. We don't have it in England. So it's something that I really like over here. <laughs> okay. So get vanilla ice cream, put a scoop of butter and then some pecans. Maybe it'll taste like it. Probably not. <laughs> Actually, that might be really gross. <laughs> But yeah, just real butter pecan. Maybe you'll find it someday over there. But while you're in Canada, stock up on that. And then yeah. uh, finally, where is a place you'd like to visit, but you haven't had the chance to travel to? Um, oh, I want to say, I want to say Mauritius and the Maldives. Like, that's two places, but still. You can say as many places as you want. Just give me your list. Yeah, sure. Uh, Hawaii, that's on there too. Like, but oh, yeah. definitely few places I need to get I need to get to a few places I <laughs> uh, don't we all don't we all and then this is I guess this I'll just throw this in what is do you have any other projects coming up that you can share on oh well I just finished a Hallmark movie with Holly Robinson Pete we were just filming um up at a very nice hotel at Harrison Hot Springs. It's a really nice hotel with these beautiful natural hot spring pools. And it was a really great shoot. And uh, you know, that will be coming soon. And I will share when I have some more information, but yeah, it was great. Oh gosh, that's huge. She's so, she's like a big deal. That's really cool. And then beautiful location. So it. yeah, I can't wait to see when that comes out, we can share more details, but um, thank you so much for chatting, Natasha. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you so much for having me. It's great. And I'm so glad we were, fi we were finally able to connect. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> it finally happened. I really appreciate it. You're so cool. And congratulations on all your success.
Oh, thank you. Oh. But yeah, I really appreciate it. You're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. Have a great night. Yeah, you too. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of all the new episodes. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much for listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Have a great day. Thank you.